brain still. Mmm, smells nice. Oh, that's a big strawberry. Look at the size of that. Looks like a big heart. I think we'll take that before the birds take it. Give it up, mate. Give it up. That's a beauty. Well, that one looks good. Ducky. So this is my old chicken house, and the chickens aren't supposed to be in here, but they all got back in. They got it under the fence. And what are you doing in your pace, eh? Hey, mate, what you doing on the couch? I can see you hiding behind the chair. I can see you. You can hide under there, dear. Yeah, I see you, mate. Beautiful morning here in Tasman, just walking dogs. Today we've got Spencer with us, doing work experience. Got quite a lot on, he's got pace. Originally we were supposed to be pig hunting this morning, but somebody tore their quad. And that somebody was me, I was on the veranda doing some lunges. I can't go pig hunting like this, so I'm trying to nurse it because the raw's coming up soon, I want to get out for a deer. Bruno knows what time it is, don't you mate? So whip the skin off both those, bud. There goes my carpet. So father and son team, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Good man. So do you know how to set his tucker up so he can eat it? Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is get your knife and just go down here, but not to the very end. So you've got squares that way and that way. Good man. There you go, nice one. Today Arp's taking the old hot water cylinder out and I'm kind of excited about using the copper in it because you can use copper for those for all sorts of things. Cheese. That side's a bit rusty so hold your hand flat on the bottom yep. and then we'll just lift it up. And what we're looking? This side? This side there, yes. Yeah. So if we lift hand under there, right hand up and both lift it up. Put it down on the ground side. It's not that actually that heavy, is it? No, it's not. Just you put 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 uh, rusted out abs. It is a bit. When you saw all the uh, brown sludge, we'll put it over against the, my planks here, coming out of the bottom. You'd say to yourself you'd never drink hot water out of a tank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this holds it up, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually a base. A copper will be inside this. This is a cast base, I think. Oh yeah. Bye. Seems a bit hard to be the copper. Anyway, the outside was completely gone. Yep. Yeah, but uh, she was still going. Well, Might be able to use the element. Yeah, well, you probably could actually still use it for all sorts of things, like a, a actual copper for heating stuff. You could put a, a fire. Still. Still. You can make some whiskey. Whiskey. Whiskey, right. boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tall stories whiskey. These peaking ducks were grown in an incubator. One of my first ones out of incubator that one of my patrons gave me. Thanks mate. Simon's here. Do you want some gloves? It's a bit of greenery for them. There's prickles there too. Yeah, you're doing well. You want some gloves, mate? I can give you some. You're a bit like Smash used to be. He knew he used to use gloves or chaps or anything for that matter. Probably half a lean up in the pond, that's okay. So, father and son team putting in my flooring. Got the hardboard gone down and got a carpet at this end here. Daniel's doing this end, this is going to be my bedroom. And line out, line out this end here because it's a bit of a thoroughfare. It's great watching tradesmen work, man. They're so quick at doing their work, it's incredible. It would take me, well, I hate to think how long, but it's, they're smashing it out in such a fast time. Having said that, uh, Steve's been doing this for 40 odd years, so I guess you get pretty good at something after 40 years, but just amazing to watch how quick that's gone up in a couple of hours. How are you getting on, bro? 
Yeah, pretty good man, you? Yeah. Smashing it. Hey, uh, Dad says you do a bit of fishing, yeah? Yeah, a little bit of fishing, eh, man? Yeah. I get out the kayak. How's it going for you so far this year? Oh, not too good, really. We caught a couple of um, snapper and then out uh, Durbel, but apart from that, nothing really, eh? Yeah. I've it's been pretty caught. slow. I've, I've caught bug or big fish, just little ones, eh? Yeah. That's a grubber or a pick. And the one that Spencer's got, hold up, bro, so we can see it, mate. That's actually called a matock. That's the right name. It was one of my subscribers, a female subscriber, that put it right on that. So there's the difference. Pick and mattock. Bit of uh, information for you. I actually prefer the lighter tool. And Spencer likes the mattock. He likes the bigger one. The old blackberry. She pops up everywhere. First of us pig hunters is blackberry. Right mate, pop that in there. And then we'll rob some fuel out of the boat and pop it in there. How do you disconnect this from here? Do you know how that works? Pop it off. Pop it off then, shows what you do. Guess like. You're thinking, you're thinking about it, you're nearly there. You were right when you pulled it back. Tired as it's getting a bit of oxidation in there, it's coming. But yeah, it's rusted around there. Yeah, she needs to, needs to clean. A bit of a scrub with a wire brush. That's not good that, because uh, when you go out to see in your boat, one thing you don't want to do is have fuel problems. Right, pick this up here. There's a bit of fuel on that, and I'll show you how you can tip it into here without spilling it everywhere. We do have a funnel. Well, that's a bit grubby, you could do with a clean. Okay, I'll take that. It's just in there, you got it. This way. Smash it back in the boat, bro. Connect her up. fitting on there. Yep. Nice. So that takes the weight of your machine. You can swing it off that tear into it. Do you want gloves or are you okay? Alright. I, I can give you gloves if you want. Chaps will keep you protected. Alright no pussy. Alright mate we'll take your pig hunting this uh, season again. We'll see how unpussy you are once we get you in that thick black bearing gorse. I'm keen. Okay mate. Keen's good. Push them in hard bud. Push them in hard and they lock up. There you go. You're good. That's it, sweet. Let's muck around and get this down. Let's get this in the carpet. Wow, awesome. Yeah, it's a bit different the way you do it. There you are. And hooks into there. And one end, fold back over. Same again, on the opposing side it clips in. Yeah, that one there clips in. That one's a bit longer, that's okay. Hopefully it's not all going to unravel. I'll we'll stick it on here. Okay, here's the key bit that we didn't do the first time. When you put these on, you've got to make sure that this here goes on the outside of the... Of, of these? these? Yeah, of those there. So you take it off, put it around... Around the, the outside. Flip it in. Yeah, it's going on the outside. We didn't do this when we first got it because we didn't look at the instructions and we kept on losing line, didn't we, son? So yeah. see, see how that is there, Spencer? Yeah. You remember that, mate? Yeah. And then your top goes on. Just make it on, son. It's pretty straightforward. It's a clever system how it works, actually. Just clips down and you're all good to go. I bought about 100 metres of this and then I only found out after I bought it that they now have one that comes out that's got sharp edges on it, like a, a square. Or triangular, I think it is. I'm not sure, but it cuts a lot better than the round stuff. A lot of stuff going on here on a Monday morning, and what it has done is it's made my Pekin duck completely abandon her eggs. They're all cold now. She's been off for, well, since 8 o'clock this morning since the first person turned up. She's parked up here, and she looks like she ain't going back to her eggs. They're sitting in there, and they're all going cold. What a bastard. 20 eggs. Yana reckons it's because of all the, the noise going on with the tradesmen working. Probably is. I'm a bit gutted because I was looking forward to... We haven't had much joy with raising. So far we've only managed to raise two ducklings. Bugger. Okay. We're here in the caravan because we don't have a farmhouse that's finished yet. Arb's actually building right now and today I'm teaching Spence a bit about editing, uploading and helping him with his own YouTube channel. So what we've got here mate is we've got uh, the stuff taken off the phone. There's our video and you want to go to video effects there. Tap on that one. Bump bump. Bring it up, then you want to go down. Remember this, mate, because you'll be doing it and you've got to go to transform. Sometimes when I'm doing a snap vlog, which just comes straight off the phone, I don't do all this. 
and we want to go to horizontal okay horizontal flip now you can either tap that white and then tap on that like this so I did a double tap so that's turned the whole lot around sometimes as I was saying with my snap vlogs it just all goes straight off the phone straight on YouTube and that's why you see the car I'm on the wrong side of the road or I'm playing a left hand guitar instead of right hand guitar or the house is all backwards and if you watch the videos you go oh it's all backwards that's what a snap vlog does because you can't alternate between the front camera and the back camera yeah. okay I'm going to teach you how to export that we're going to put some music on it I'm going to go through the whole thing and this is going on to this channel I'm going to leave him with a job he's all set up he's got gloves he's got a mask because sometimes this stuff can carry Legionnaire's disease you don't want to breathe that in it's actually a good day because there's no wind around and Pace is supervising aren't you Pace because he's your mate ideally Spencer would rather be out pig hunting with me today but uh, that ain't going to happen because I rooted my leg after he's done this I'm going to take him out to shoot a rabbit and then I've got an appointment with the nurse to see what needs doing with my leg and pace sit down mate don't interrupt his work okay I'll come back and check you in a minute bro that's a good way to do it smart thinking show us what you're doing there I haven't done that before using the back one to compress it a little bit see that's the sort of thinking that you do that I like that's that's using your noodle he's a clever clever young man very clever watch the space this guy's working really well, he's done all these and he's got his packets here so we know what they are. Cauliflower, spring onions, celery, the pace is helping of course. No, you're not, you're in the way and I'm going to start tagging. I've got this in a market, you've got to put on what your plants are. Three piles now, of four, plus more over here. Celery, looking good eh Pace, what do you reckon? Fucking lovely man, I love these plants. I like hanging out here with me friend here. But he hasn't got his mask on. He's not wearing his gloves. What's the story? What's the story? I don't know, mate. I gave him a mask and I gave him gloves. Yeah. What is the story, mate? Don't know. Just a pain in the ass. Oh, he's done a good job. Got them all on nicely. Just going to water them in there. Good man. Where should I put these on? Wherever you can squeeze them in, bud. What's up here? Uh, nothing's in there, so they can go in there. Yep, be fine. Let's get these tags out. Good. Let's have them in some water so you know what plants are what. What are those plants there? Oh, Japanese daikon radishes. Okay, sweet. Yep. Smash a bit of uh, water on that and then we can go for a hunt. I know it's made in China and I know it kills rabbits. It's Winky and a bunch of good bastards bought it. Gun City. It's for the young fellas we take out. So, first things first, I'm going to just check it. Make sure there's nothing up the spout. Clear. Poke this back up here. So Spence has been out with me what, a couple of times now, mate. Three or four times. Yeah, and hasn't shot a rabbit yet, have you? I've shot one. You shot one with me, have you? Yeah? You sure? No tall story? The first one I killed. Okay, yeah, okay. This is the last few. It is shooting straight, I know, because I've been shooting a few. We've got four in there. Actually, it's a five mag, that one. So you know there's nothing up inside it, because I've just put the bolt on. Yep. This is all good. Okay. Point in a safe direction. There you go. The most important thing about this hunt will be your rifle safety. Mm. That's the most important thing. I don't care if you miss a rabbit, but if I see you do anything silly with a rifle, that will be a strike against you. And we don't want any strikes, do we? Nope. Okay, the idea is to stop now, because we're actually in a zone, and look, there's been rabbits up in this paddock up in here. You can see them through the trees. You could sneak up and have a look through there. Just go straight up in there. There's also rabbits bouncing around here quite regularly, and some in the paddock beside where the chickens are. The idea is to move and stop all the time. And the idea is not to kill a chicken. Well, you can kill a chicken if you do. You've got to pluck it and gut it and prepare it and we'll eat it. These wattle seeds are really noisy to walk on. I'm giving Spencer a few pointers on not waving his hands around. Ideally, the only thing that's moving is your eyes and your head. And if you have to move your head a real slow pivot like this, because animals pick up on movement. Nothing up ahead here. Oh, we'll cover some more ground and carry on. Whatever you're hunting, whether it's pigs or deer or you're shooting goats, in the case of us going out for a rabbit, the three S's. I call it the three S's. Silent. Sneaky. And what's the third one? Stealth. Mm, stealth. That covers everything. That covers movement. Okay, stop there. Can you see a rabbit? Can you see a rabbit somewhere? Mm. 
No, there's most likely there's an apple orchard over there. Yep, there is. There's one up there. Just get your eyes into see Have another good look up there and see if you can spot that rabbit there. Come on, man. Have a good look. How are your eyes, mate? Are your eyes all right? Yeah, they're okay. They're can not... you see that rabbit there in the row? Don't know where you're looking. Can you see it? In that row of apples, the middle row? Can you see it? Where's the middle row? Yep. Right ahead there. Oh, there's another one. There's actually two. There's one f further at the back. See the, see the back line there? Where's Over the there? middle row? Forget about that. Can you see the big one standing up there at the back? See where the... Oh, it's, it's gone. It's gone underneath the hedge now. I don't know where you're looking. That's okay. That's all right. They're not on our property anyway, but yeah. the point is it's about just training to see. Okay, stop. There's another one now. Okay, come over here. Okay, go past the apples. Can you see the one there in the middle row there? It's a long way off. Wait. It's behind the apples. What's in there? Can you... What's that? I see something move around in the grass over here. Yeah, don't wave your arms around, bud. That's something... You, it's hard enough of me filming waving around. There's one There's one at the back there. Yeah, it's it's a colour. It's not a shape. Don't look for a rabbit. You're looking for a colour. It's a... Well, it's a shape, but don't expect to see a shape of a rabbit because it's not. It's a it's a change in the in the landscape. It's a long way off. Anyway, we can't shoot either of those two. You'll see it when we get up closer. You'll see it run away. But that's that's not important now because we're not shooting on that property anyway. It's not ours. We're just trying to get your eyes used to seeing stuff. Is it on that side of the apples or this side? This side. Oh, I was yeah. looking at the top. You can say that without waving your hands around. Get used to not moving your hands around. You're trying to be stealth all the time. It's really important. It's really important to be really stealth. Now there's likely to be a rabbit just around this corner here. So come close to here. And we just might see one in here. Stay close to the trees so you're not sticking out the road. Come on. Come right in under the trees here, so you're hidden. You see anything? Not on our side. No? Okay. So we're using this tree up in front of us as a cover. This pine tree, so you want to stay directly behind it. And we're going to sneak up to here and see if there's something behind it, keeping in line with the pine tree. There's a the rabbit stop, freeze. You see it? I'll zoom in. The ducks will give us away in a minute. There he goes. You see him alright? I see him. He's in the bull paddock. There's still there. Two, yep, there is one behind me. One there and one centre. It's a good sized rabbit. So you can take it from here. It's about a hundred and twenty, although I think we can get close to that. Let's just sneak up, going really quietly. So what are you going for, body? There's two other yeah, one to go, go for the one standing up, mate. Oh, he's down there. Okay, go for the back one. Go for body shot. Remember go a little bit lower. Or slightly lower. There you go. There's a shot. There's the shot. Okay, reload, reload, reload. You shot to the too much to the right. Okay. Uh, better to have a clean mist than to have a wounded animal you couldn't get. Yeah. But you've got to become mindful of when you squeeze it off. You can't do that. You can't move it all. Uh, the other thing you did too is you closed your eye when you squeezed it. You got to try to keep that eye open. Yeah, I was holding the camera and watching you. I don't know if I got the rabbit in the shot, but I was watching you and it looked like uh, you just moved a wee bit. Mm. That's okay, we'll get another chance. I just hate standing up at third line now. Oh, I, lying down's the easier shot. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes standing up's the only option. That wasn't a lying down shot. Well, you could lay down the road here. You could have gone down there, maybe. Mm. Anyway, it's a learning curve. We've come out of this thick native bush behind us here. And we're lying down. It's a real good vantage point because nothing in front of us has seen us. We've got all this cover. Just saying to Spencer, this is a perfect place. I'll just pan around so you can see what's in front of us. We've got a big paddock there. And we've got all this bush above us and behind us. So we've got all that cover. This is a good place for a rabbit to pop out. Spencer said he wanted to take a shot from the ground. Well, we're already lying on the ground, so it's a question of just uh, waiting. It's that time of night. Is that your legs moving? Try to be still. It makes a big difference. Spencer says he can't see from here, so he's going to put himself out in the open. Going to crawl on his belly. Take your rifle, mate, and treat it with care. There you go. There we go. Keep flat. I reckon you give those paradise ducks see you. Just got to go flat. Don't let them give you away.
keep flat, mate. Jeez, at this speed here, you might be there by Christmas time. <laughs> Come on. Get your legs down. No point kicking your legs up. Maybe you're lying flat. Keep your back legs down. There's no point lifting your legs up when you're moving. Keep them flat. Keep going. That's good. Keep those back legs down. Get your feet on the ground. Drag yourself along flat. You've only got that bit of cover to go up to. See that? You're going to go up to that there and get yourself in position. I'll stay back here so you've got more cover. Right, go. Just stay still, there's a rabbit right where those paradise ducks are. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, get yourself in a position where you can take the shot. Keep yourself flat, mate. You... Well, 10 out of 10 for ingenuity. He's taking his boots off for a rest. And uh, he's going to try and see if he can go for his bunny now. Look at that. Let's go middle body, a little bit low. Should be good. Complete miss, mate. What do you mean? I had it on. There he goes, he's, he's standing up now, see you there? He's still there, he's standing up by the wood pole, see him standing up looking? Can you see, can you see him? That was now. too low. Yeah, that was, oh, he's still there, he's by the wood pole, he's still looking at you. I can still see him. Can you see him? Yep. Okay, just take your time, a little bit higher, there you go. He's definitely gone there. He's still there, mate, he's standing right there. I, I literally hit him in the head. No, you didn't hit him in the head. He's still standing there. I oh, probably because the mag's empty. Those so Spencer's shot six times and this rabbit's just hanging around to be shot. I, I, I'm right in the middle of him. I'm dead still on him. Okay, mate. I believe you. All right. My dogs get walked two to three times every day. Come on, Bruno. Good boy. Wiggle, Come on. Wiggle. Wiggle, me. Wiggle. B running around 100 mile out. B, take it easy, mate. If he runs in, yeah, you can break your leg. He's bloody fast. Good dog, Bigsy. Good dog. Got his pine cone. Good boy. Years ago, I had a dog called Chun. He was my main dog. It's actually my very first pig hunting video I did was with Chun. And I would throw five or six pine cones in here and then go back up to the house. And he'd spend up to an hour just by himself self exercising, catching pine cones, finding them out there, crunching them up, destroying them, attacking them. And he'd just continually swim the whole time. And I'd come back an hour later, he'd still be swimming. He'd just go non stop. And that's how he used to self train himself. It was awesome because you could leave him down there and he'd be as fit as. And Chun only recently died, just very recently got put down. He retired with an elderly couple, a bloke in his oh, 90s, I think. Oh, Bigsy loves the water, don't you, mate, eh? Good dog. What you looking at, Poe, hey? What you looking at, mate? Hmm? This is what the sparrows do to our food. They shit on it and they just tear it to bits. Look at the holes. All our vegetables have been caned, they've been pecked. Every single one. We've pretty much lost our crop. The kale's got shredded. Look at this, there's nothing left for us to eat. This is a bloody sparrows. They've destroyed my garden pretty much, or Jonas' garden. Apart from shitting on every plant, the silver beet, the holes, we're not getting much to eat. So what we're doing is, we're taking off these leaves here, which is nothing for us to eat. I mean, there's nothing on there at all. It's completely stripped. There's no food on it. They've stripped the kale. We're taking these leaves off here. This plant, there's nothing left. It's gone. And keeping that for the ducks and chickens, so at least we can get a little bit off it, turn it into eggs. This plant here has just annihilated it. A lot of plants like that. This morning, Spencer's doing the weeding here. Another day, and I'm going to cook some chicken up for lunch. Wrap your laugh and get around that. It's that time, it's coffee time. Pace, have you been up on there? Did you do that? Hey? Did you do that? Look at your paws, look at the mess. Hey? Do we care about it? Oh, you're going fuck, man. I'm just hanging out here with my friend Spencer, having a great old time and all. That's right, just sitting here. I'm the happiest doggy in the whole world. She's been patting me and my fucking hair is all over them. Look at that man, look at them, stain of them. 
What a mess that I did all over the cash truck. That's me there. I don't give a fuck. I couldn't care less, man. I'm the dog, it's bollocks. What are you calling, Pace? Oh, he's always talking like that. I don't know what it is, mate. He's not right, is he? Yeah, what are you on, Pace? I man? think he's been drinking coffee. Well, we got rid of all the rats, but now we've got a mouse epidemic. There's fucking mice everywhere in here. You see any mice in here, Spencer? No. Well, yesterday there was a, a mouse and Pace jumped on it. Just about caught it. So it's either mice or it's bloody rats. So we're gonna set some mice traps now. And kill the bastards. We're down in my forest and we're looking for food. We've got a bit of native bush behind the house here. Actually, right in front of me is something you can make a tea out of. Do you know that, fella? Yeah. Make rose tip tea out of that. Very high in vitamin C. Grab your bag, and we'll pop those in. We'll take a few of those with us. Pigs love to feed off these. Rose tip tea is very good for you. It's got a lot of antioxidants. Take all those, mate. And when you're in the uh, high country and even the low country down south you'll find this growing quite a bit and done properly it makes a good tea mm. grab those two even that old one nah buff that one for the birds mate I was hopeful to find a birch bullet growing down here. We got some, but no more have popped up. I thought there might be some more after the rain, but nothing there. I haven't identified what these guys are, and there's some small ones here. I need my son to show me those, because I don't know what those ones are. Does anybody else know? Underneath it, it's got gills under there. Quite possibly an edible mushroom, but when in doubt, leave it out. I know that my son, Yona, will know what that is, because he's good at identifying mushrooms. Fungus, mushrooms, can feed you, or it can bloody kill you. It can cure you or kill you. And if in doubt, yep, leave them, leave them in the ground. That's not worth it. I crawled under here and the gore's thinking I might find another birch billet. I thought it might be a slippery jack, but they don't have gills. Spencer just found fresh scratchings and poo where a rabbit's been, so there's a few rabbits in this forest, eh? Yeah. Might have to sneak through here with the rifle next time you come back. Yeah. Should be some mushrooms up in here somewhere. There's plenty of dead wood. Well, no birch billets in there. Down here we've got this pinus radiatus, this old big pine tree. And the old man pine, sometimes you'll find slippery jacks growing around pinus radiata. Just found an escapee. That chicken's on the wrong side of the fence. What you doing there, mate? Hey? You're on the wrong side of the fence. You have a lot of fun. Oh, I can see where they've been here. Scratching. I don't want you on this side. You're going to scratch up all my native bush. Look, they've been having a nice little bath down here. How'd you get out, mate, eh? We're going to catch you. Hey? Sit. Sit. Thank you. That's good, that's what I want to see. You're a good chicken, aren't you? Let's pick you up. I love these shavers. They're just so, so good. There you go. Nice landing. That's where you got out, isn't it? Under there, yeah. I'll do your deal. You stay on that side of the fence and you'll have a good life. Keep coming over here and you'll end up in the pot. Just saying to Spencer's we will find a slippery jack and we've got one here. It looks like either a slug's had a go at it but that there's uh, good, we can take that one, mate. Oh, the other one beside him, he's passed his used by date. Look, he's, he's just died. But this one here's got, oh, I reckon we can do better than that too, mate. She's on its way out. Slugs have eaten it. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's history. See that, they've eaten all the bottom. Yeah. But that's a slippery jack. Spencer found these ones. I think uh, that one there you could take, mate. The old slugs have had a bit of a feed on this too. They love them, eh? Grab your knife, bud, and we'll take those two. Let's get his open owl. Close to the ground, cut it off. Move your knife back and forward as a cutting motion. Not just a push, but cut it. That's it, keep going. Yeah, that's in good nick, actually. It's not bad. We can eat that. So that's your slippery jack. That's a good example of a really nice slippery jack. It's a big one. Grab your knife, mate. We'll have that. Cut it nice and close to the ground. Get down there. And remember to move your knife blade. That's the one. Oh, she's uh, she's had it, something's had a bit of a feast on the side of it. Probably a slug. There's still plenty of flesh in that. Just cut a V in that so you cut that piece out, mate. See that there? Just put grab your knife there and go down to the point there. Just take that out and remember to move your knife. Yep, go down to there and other side. You don't have to take so much mushroom out. Go right to the stalk all the way. Because we don't know whether it's been a rat or a slug, most likely it's been a slug, but we don't want that. But this here, 
That's good chomping and chewing. Could be something inside it, but it's good fresh. Whack it in the basket, bud. It's a good one. What we're looking for is rings of grass that are greener in the paddock. That's where the mycelium of the mushroom makes its ring because it chooses the place where the most nutrition is, the grass will show you. So if you watch where the grass is greener, that's where you'll find mushrooms growing. You can see there's a bit of a green patch down the gully there. The side of the hill here, there's some places too. That's the sort of grass we're looking for. It's a little bit green here. There's no mushrooms in it, but that's the sort of place that you'd start to look. You see it's, it's brown here and it's much greener in there, so pretty windy, so I might be getting the audio blown out a bit up here, sorry. Who's going to find the first mushroom, me or you, mate? Uh -huh. Got your hunting eyes on? Uh -huh. There we go, mate. There's one here. It's a nice one, too. Hey, look, there's more. There we go. There's the ring. Look. You walk straight past it. There's one there. Look at this. This past it's used by date, but notice that they're all in a circle. There's another one in the circle. And they make a big ring. Here's another one in the circle over here. Look at this. Yeah, a lot of these are past the used by date. They're starting to return back to the earth. But we can harvest some, and there's a classic circle there. Another one here. We walk straight past that. Should I cut this off? Yeah, mate, cut the healthy ones. How's that looking? Good. Beautiful. They've been there for a while, so maybe they're past the use by date. This one's getting a bit old. Oh, no, it's all right. No, we can eat that. Good chomping and chewing. Beauty. That's all right. Should I take this one? Take the ones that are in reasonably good condition. This one's not bad. Yep. Yeah. Jump on that. Some of these are in better condition than others. That's a nice one. So Spencer's going to sort the fire out. And what we do need to do with these guys is we need to take this, this skin off here. That skin will make you, can make some people sick. I've actually eaten it, but you shouldn't eat it. It can make you quite crook. I seem to be uh, okay with it, but some people can get quite crook. So always take the skin off your slippery jack. These meadow mushrooms, skin stays on, it's good. And he's gonna get the fire sorted. I'm gonna go get our chicken. 1.6 kg of chicken, whole chicken, free range chicken. I cannot grow chickens for that sort of money. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the spine, but I wanna keep the ass intact because there's a lot of tucker in that. There's our spine there, righty -o. I'll leave the bum on one side. Parsons nose. Now we can open that out. About two and a half ounces of New Zealand butter. I say New Zealand butter because our butter comes from cattle that are grass fed, not grain fed, making it probably the best butter in the whole world. That goes in my bowl. What I want is some spring onion. This is out of my garden. We chop that up now, just nice and thin. I'm trying to keep most of it on the board if I can. one lemon off my tree. Gonna make some lemon zest. Black pepper on the bowl over my butter. And plenty of salt in it. This is my glass house. And what I'm looking for is this uh, Italian parsley. It's really nice. It's just about seed, just about stuffed. And it will get a bit here, get a bit brown, but it'll be okay. Gonna chop that up, I'm gonna use that also. Spencer did an epic job doing the garden and he's weeded the rows and made it look really awesome. Good job, mate. Parsley in the bowl with our butter, my lemon, my onion, my parsley, the salt, my pepper. I think it's under the skin and pull it away from the chicken like this. Get underneath it. Like so. This here, we're gonna put that inside it. And that's gonna make it absolutely delicious let's pour it right down in there underneath all the butter dribble down heaps of it under there underneath the leg in here if you use a spoon you'll get it in there a lot easier than trying to stuff it with your, just your fingers there we go we'll push it right down inside stuff it right in currently Spencer's preparing this other small camp oven for the pie nice job mate so we're gonna do a blueberry apple pie and we might even smash some strawberry in it mm. 
Sounds great. So Spencer's going to make a pie, blueberry apple pie. We're going to cook these up in the small camp oven. Just throw them in there, bud. And then we'll throw our blueberries on top and smash it in a pie. It's getting windy. Toss it in, mate. Throw it all in. It's good. Excellent. Spencer's doing a fine job on the chicken, and I'm going to make a pastry for our pie. I'm using a gluten-free flour. Currently I'm out of the keto diet and enjoying things like this. Normally I don't have. I said in my last video, I don't think it's natural to be in a state of ketosis all the time. And that's the reason that I'm enjoying making things like this, which has a carbohydrate in it. Butter. Again, this nice New Zealand butter. And I'm just going to smash this in like that. You want about a half... <laughs> Cut. No, I'm not going to cut. You want about a half butter, half flour. Oh, jeez, Clay. Half, half. <laughs> See that? Yeah, we could edit it out, but we're not going to. You guys understand accidents happen. There we go. Half the butter, half the flour, and a bloody mess. <laughs> Spence is cracking up laughing at me. Now, the butter's salted, but I'm actually going to add a little bit more salt in there. One thing I don't cook with ever is sugar. Just a little bit of salt. But I have plenty of salt. If you've got heart problems, you might not want so much salt, but my heart works fine. It's all tickety boo. Just gonna get stuck in up my hands. We've got about half half in there. I'm gonna roll that butter around. And just break it up like this with the fingers. I need this for a while. I'll come back in a minute. I'm sort of racing the clock a bit because. The chicken's ready and the pie's not even halfway made. I thought I had some pastry in the fridge, but I didn't, so I had to quickly make some. Part of the challenge. Oh, we've got some, some treats in there. Gonna add a tiny little bit of water to this. Just a wee bit, not much. Carry on mixing with hands. Got really if you're making a pastry that's gluten free like I am as gluten free flour you're not going to get it to stick together anywhere near as good with a normal flour it's going to fall to bits but don't worry about it it's not the end of the world it's all going to fall to bits in your mouth it's also going to fall to bits in the other end when it comes out so what you do to get your pastry up is you get a couple of knives one under one end like that and like I said, if it breaks when you're putting it in the pie dish, don't cry. Just stick it all together as best you can. Lift it up, one piece, and like so. So we've got it in our, our dish like that there. I lost the wee bit at the top. When it's in there, then you start to mould in the dish again. That's why you don't worry about it breaking. Our blueberries and apple are ready. That's our pie filling. We're gonna make it heaps. Skews fingers on top of the pie. Give it a bit of a work in. Beauty. Oh, she's nice and hot. Okay, just take your time. Carefully put it back on. Down and go. She's getting five minutes, mate. That's not on properly, that lid. Put it on properly, please. Yeah, hear that noise? That's the noise you want. Now, when you're cooking in a camp oven like this, things go much faster. So, pies. Check them all the time, yeah? That way you'll be sweet as bro. Yep. We'll have a look at that in a couple of minutes. Alright, good. Mm. Shit, it actually tastes better than it looks, doesn't it? Yeah, it's got a little bit of sweetness. It's amazing because cooking outdoors you can't control stuff. But this is actually really good. The mushrooms taste good too. 
Mm. Chicken's tender, eh? Yeah. Much more tender than my home kill chicken. So those mushrooms are really good. That's good, good climb, mate. Yep. Oh, the mushrooms are really good with it. So we've got our pie cooking in the camp oven. I'm not sure I'll have time to show you that because his dad's going to pick him up. And he might go home and miss out and I'll have to eat it all myself. Bugger, eh? Mmm. This chicken's actually... It's actually perfect. Yeah. It's done better than I expect it to be. Mm. My first meal in two days, because yesterday I didn't eat. I had a fasting day, because I went off my keto diet, and it made me feel a bit crook. So I decided to just eat nothing. Here comes my son, Yona. Hey, Yona! Yeah. Just in time for some chicken, son. Pardon? Just in time for some chicken. Oh, Grab a plate and join us. <laughs> Can you hear that chicken there? Yes. Want to join us. <laughs> this is my son, Yona. Oh, do you get some mushrooms? No. Try a bit of mushroom. We didn't say. Uh, you now you come back and we do it really good. Mm. That actually tastes almost better than the chicken. Try that. Isn't that delicious? That was a slippery jack I gave you. Mm -hmm. mm. You got enough chicken there? My rose hip tea with blueberry and apples fusing nicely by the fire. Oh, mate, that is next level. You drink from the other side, COVID-19. Tasty, eh? Mm. You ever had that really before? Thick. It's thick, eh? Yeah. Yeah, it's thick, and all the rose hip has infused into it so you get that nice hit of vitamin C have a little bit more before you give it back I'm loving it mmm delicious thanks son oh that is just so good I'm almost tempted to crunch up one of these rose hip are they poisonous by themselves? I know they can be rose hip yeah no cooked though, okay, but just tastes like blackberry. I'm not going to crunch it up because I don't know enough about it. I've had tea and that's all I have, but I've never actually eaten the rose hip berries. You probably can. I know pigs eat them. Oops. Oops, I just poured some purple juice into the cream. Oh, well, never mind. I'm not expecting this to look fantastic because my pastry was pretty crap, but that's here yeah, that's going to be. Oh, not bad. Not bad, eh, son? What do you reckon? That's our massive strawberry that I cut the other day out of the garden. Let's go like that there. Well, for presentation, I could have done better, but hey. Oh. Oh, that's good. No sugar, just naturally what's in the fruit. Alright. Hey, thanks for watching our video, guys and girls. Appreciate your time. Good luck with your own family, and friends and cooking, whether it's outdoors or indoors. If you try my blueberry apple pie, you'll love it. I don't recommend making a gluten-free one. It's a floury taste, it's not like the pastry with normal but if you're gluten-free that's the only option you've really got if you've got anything out there that is gluten-free for a pastry that tastes better than the one i've made let us know anyway good luck be good can't be good be careful and we'll see you next video see you later